Professor Dave and Chegg here. We've been looking at Gibbs free energy for a while, but all of the examples we've seen thus far involving systems moving spontaneously so as to lower their free energy involved constant temperature and pressure. Much of the time, we were under standard conditions over the course of a chemical reaction. But of course, temperature and pressure can both change. So let's look at the dependence of free energy on pressure now. Let's recall that delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. This doesn't have to measure a change in a system. We can also just say that G equals H minus T S. Now for an ideal gas, enthalpy is not pressure dependent. There is nothing about pressure that can change the chemical energy absorbed or released in a reaction. But entropy is temperature dependent because volume affects the dispersal of matter. A larger volume results in a greater potential for more dispersal, and thus a greater entropy. So the entropy of a system when it has a larger volume is greater than when it has a smaller volume. It will be the case that the free energy of the system is equal to its standard free energy, which implies standard conditions, and thus one atmosphere of pressure, plus RT times the natural log of the actual pressure. But from this, a more applicable equation can be derived, and that is delta G equals the standard change in free energy plus RT times the natural log of Q, the reaction quotient. In other words, the position of the equilibrium will have an impact here. We should also make note that the version of R that we will most frequently use in this equation is not the same version that we are used to using from the ideal gas law. Instead, we will tend to use 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. Let's try this with the following room temperature reaction, where carbon monoxide reacts with hydrogen to yield liquid methanol, and the pressures of the gases before reacting are 5 atmospheres and 3 atmospheres, respectively. We need to use this equation, and the first thing we need to get is the standard free energy change. We can get this by using tabulated free energy of formation data, as shown here. That gives us negative 29 kilojoules for the formation of 1 mole of methanol. Then we need Q. Let's make the reaction quotient expression, noting that there will be nothing in the numerator as liquids and solids are not included. We can just plug in the partial pressures of the reactants, making sure to square the partial pressure of hydrogen, and we get 0.022. Then we can plug everything in, the standard free energy change, the new version of the gas constant, room temperature in Kelvin, and the Q value we just calculated. That will give us negative 38 kilojoules per mole, which means that the reaction is spontaneous, but furthermore is more spontaneous than the reaction would be under standard conditions. This makes sense in the context of Le Chatelier's principle, as greater pressure for the reactants will drive the equilibrium forward toward the production of methanol. And with that, we understand the dependence of free energy on pressure and how to calculate delta G under non-standard conditions. Professor Dave for Chegg, see you next time.